I happen to be like quite tired today, but the kind of tired where like I'm so tired too. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the kind of tired where like my I'm kind of loopy. Yeah, you know? I, I was going to say exactly that. I keep drinking, I'm kind of loopy as well. Keep drinking coffee and and then like my, my rational brain's kind of in the back seat. <laughs> yeah. So like it'll th that's the kind of vibe that I'm in, in, into right now as well. So wherever I'm, the and kind of not really here. <laughs> <laughs> wherever the caffeine wants this conversation to go, yeah, that's exactly. where it's gonna I go. I haven't had any yet, and I kind of oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have it in a few minutes. It's fine. I'm, I'm on more than I usually. I usually take it easy, except today is more of an extreme case. So it's like a three, three cups of coffee before now oh, kind okay, of day. Okay. So what's your most uh, amount of, uh, like the, your your limit? I mean, a, a while ago I started to just be like, okay, as only one cup of coffee a day. Cause okay. That's I, my gig as well. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know. So it would just like get me kind of freaked out sometimes and anxious and I got other yeah, yeah. issues with anxiety I don't need to tempt tempt my mm -hmm. my anxious brain in that regard yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you have had it for a long time the anxiety things because I I've developed a, like a sort of anxiety problem in the past year uh, yeah back problems and whatever uh, uh, so we can't, we can't we can't be doing too much but um, so I've kind of developed that but I don't have like pathologically I think like it's not chronic for me like it's I just uh -huh. episodic I, I would say so I kind of kind of start to relate to those things now like I kind of understand what it means like yeah and being on you know meds and, and it helps guys like. Meds aren't evil. Are there, are Meds are not are evil. Are not yeah, evil. I agree. Yeah. They help. They kind of allow you to be yourself, right? Well, yeah. I don't. I, I don't really take. I don't have a lot of experience with medication, but I really. Oh, me neither. Uh, I really keep heavily considering it, and then you know, I find a good therapist, and that's like does a lot of work on its own. Oh, sure. But it just depends. Different people got different bodies, yeah, yeah, different exactly. brains. Exactly. I know a lot of people whose medicine has really improved their lives uh -huh. and the mental health uh -huh, uh -huh. It can exactly. be a life-saving thing for some for sure. folks absolutely and it's mm -hmm. no joke like and it, you you shouldn't judge on other people's pro other people's problems cuz to each <laughs> their own so there you go there's a there's our disclaimer and uh, PSA I guess uh, like that's the moral <laughs> public, public service announcement yeah we don't get those in Portugal we don't have those If uh, you've ever been here playing or not, so uh, if you haven't, how am I going to ask you about Portugal? Well, I I was the only time I've been here was I had a connecting flight in Lisbon, and I thought I was only going to be here for an hour, but mm -hmm. then the flight got canceled. Oh, canceled, canceled, the, like canceled, and so we stood, we stayed like overnight, but like for like six hours or something only but at the n craziest nicest hotel I've oh, ever seen really uh, but such a brief time and we we're like exhausted and trying to go home and we only had like f like actually more like five hours at this hotel uh -huh. and we slept for four of them and then just like the other so I didn't see anything mm -hmm. so this is really my first time in Portugal with my uh, well once again I'm exhausted uh -huh. <laughs> sure. well, um, and not here for long uh -huh, uh -huh. but such is the life of a traveling singer sometimes mm -hmm. that's what you got yourself into yeah <laughs> I knew it <laughs> There's uh, actually something I wanted to ask that ties into that, which is uh, your so your music is uh, has a lot of narrative elements and a lot of definite def uh, definite um, or defined like the lyrics are. You can't just you know you have to know the lyrics and there's a lot of lyrics and you have a lot of songs al already in the, your young life, uh, yeah. young man. But <laughs> but uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what I meant was this. Uh, um, what I meant was that uh, how do you uh, how do you uh, practice them? Like I mean, do you, do you just practice them and you know them? Like um, and um, or do you sometimes forget? That's what I actually I think mean. Forgetting lyrics yeah, is yeah. it's a it's a problem. Mm -hmm. I, it happens to me. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, especially, I mean, it seems like I keep putting more and more lyrics into songs. <laughs> exactly, that's what. I'm... And and faster, like faster delivery of mm -hmm. them, um, you know. And it could be list. It could be I don't know. It could be the influence of of Kendrick Lamar and uh, oh. a lot of oh. hip hop. Oh. That I've been listening to more hip hop every year, mm -hmm. I think. But. Uh, uh, no, I, I'm not sure it's it's that or just uh, I've just been feeling urgently lyrical. Mm -hmm. Like I mm -hmm. have a lot it's of just more ideas. It's more dense, absolutely, right? Right? Yeah, and 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 there's I've kind of been trying to build a a world. I mean, this this record we've made is sort of like uh, a world, like a movie. Like it kind mm -hmm. of is. Mm -hmm. I think it was almost like a. What it's most like to me is actually like a, like a movie trailer, where sure. you get like okay. a whole little chunk of a scene, but you don't actually know exactly what's going on. But like you see that there's the characters and there's a vibe and a situation that you partly understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of more impressionistic, impressionistic in a way. Like so, it's like uh, like bits of. A, th a thing, yeah, and uh, kind of, what could be a thing, yeah, and kind of like how we get the news if we like get get the news on your phone, you just like read a horrible sentence and see a terrifying picture, and uh, sure. uh, that's your picture of a part of the world mm. for that afternoon. Mm. Um, it, life kind of feels like more like that than a than a novel or a. Tommy by the Who style rock uh -huh, opera type sure. thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it has led to lots of lyrics, and, and I mean, I, I some of them I practice like right before the show, but you can't practice all of them right before the show. <laughs> so you kind of have to like form these um, these pathways, mm -hmm. your neural pathways, because like I notice, and like you, you don't want to rely on this too much, but like. Once you really know a song, you start to be able to sing it uh, while entirely thinking about something else, yeah, sure. which is almost frightening. It's like um, it's kind of like muscle memory for the brain, right? Because with an instrument, you kind of have that, like with guitar and piano and stuff like that. You can just kind of almost uh, have your body do all the work. I would say. Yeah, yeah. but but I'm very wary of that also because like when I perform, like. Um, I, I want it, it's really an effort to like have it be happening for me in sure. real time, like as if for the first time uh -huh. and saying these things uh, with intention Absolutely. Um, and with regard to what it might be like to be hearing this song for the first time as uh -huh. some people in the audience are. Uh, yeah, yeah. Plus, you don't want to go through the motions just just going through the motions, right? You want to be there and present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. R right. But you want to also know it so well that you can deliver it kind of perfectly. Uh -huh. I think about a lot. I think about delivery a lot and the uh, exact stress of the the syllables. You know, I, I like watch some performers who don't do who, who who change their songs wildly and sort of improvise how they deliver them. Like Bob Dylan does it all the time sure. throughout his career. He never he he just changes up how he sings each song and it's. Mm -hmm. Shocking to me, <laughs> it's like to, to have that confidence and also that it works out for him so often. Uh -huh, that like, uh -huh. but you know, I guess that's. It's kind of also in the vein that like if you're once you're on stage, you can kind of just perform whatever you, your guts say. Sometimes, kind of. Yeah, there's a little bit, but like, I feel like I can I can only improvise when I like a couple of things in a show. Um, and most of it I like really know, I really know how I want to do it and I do it that way uh, for maximum impact. And then the things I say between the songs, those are mostly improvised. Uh, which, yeah. I also always struggle how much to say between songs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you did no banter from you? Like, <laughs> or... No, no, I, I usually do introduce songs. Like, oh, okay. Not all of them, but like probably more than half of the songs in our show, I'd say something. Maybe half of them, I say uh -huh. something about it. 
beforehand because I feel like it deepens it. Uh, it like um, sets things up, doesn't it? Like really, the frame, frames frames things. I would right. Yeah, it's and like it, in the moment. Um, Unless you like really know the song quite well, I'm just always thinking about the people who are seeing our band for the first time, uh-huh. and I'm like, I want them to have a, an experience with very few barriers to getting the full effect of this song, you know. Um, and and also because like, I don't know, I have a thing where like, if somebody loves our band, I can't trust their opinion of how the show was because if you love something the show is going to be great you know uh-huh. I, I when I see a band I love it doesn't matter I like I cannot criticize them because I am in love with the songs uh-huh. and however they do them pro- almost however would they do them would, would just hit me but if you barely know a band, then I'm interested in what what you have to say about it, because like, what's your first or second impression? Anyways, I don't, I don't, I'm like, I I thrive on the, I like to be hypercritical of of our band, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like, uh, as long as it doesn't tear it apart, it's fine. It is, there's a lim- there's like a limit, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not of my bandmates, but like. I think everyone in in our oh, band sure, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, of uh, ourselves yeah. like we kind of we kind of doubt doubt ourselves it, it, in an effort to make ourselves better. Uh-huh. You know. And I look at I'm especially with like making new work, making new songs, I'm like I have to start to believe like anything I've done in the past would not be good enough for how good I want the next thing to be, you know? Because, sure, 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 sure. like, if you're aiming, if you're aiming for the crown, uh-huh. you gotta aim high. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you want to make the greatest record ever made, which I am always trying to do and failing, but, you know, <laughs> but but trying to make the greatest record ever made, like, actually the greatest, <laughs> that kind of causes you to make a, a better record, I think. But so that's a that's a setting things up for yourself like really high and some and and there's magic happens in that transition in that uh, not transition that ex, uh, action I would say like um, because you can never know like for sure right well yeah. there, I mean the truth is there is no greatest record ever made uh, sure absolutely no, there cannot true. be um, especially one single one no, like one right. single record you you want the whole spectrum. Except for the worst ah, shit. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> you could you could sure. cut that out. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I don't cut anything out <laughs> unless you, you tell me to. Yeah, uh, but, oh no, I meant I meant cut. <laughs> I just want to erase certain bands from music history. Is what I meant. Uh, 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 <laughs> whose names I won't mention. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, we're much more focused on uh, what we enjoy than what we don't enjoy uh, necessarily. On uh, yeah. And sure. well, the the other, th- and I well, okay. okay. Too much coffee. I, I'm no, trailing off. No, no, no. It's, I'm it's going on rants. It's, like it's, I'm going on rants. <laughs> it's it's fine, dude. It's fine. Like the, the, the don't feel any pressure. Just no. I feel I feel fine. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so I want to mess this up. So, harpoons, boyfriends, and visions. Are you trying to tell us something with this evolution <laughs> of name uh, naming your band? What does that evolution suggest to you? I'm hmm. curious. Okay, harpoons, boyfriends, and visions. I would say that uh, um, you were out uh, hunting for whales um, two centuries ago and uh, you met someone that you really liked and then you met someone else that you really liked and then you met someone else that you really liked Mm. and that's about enough so I would say like there's the boyfriend and um, you were extremely tired from traveling and playing shows and hunting whales uh, that you decided to think about yourself uh, in a new way and say that I'm not 
going to hunt whales anymore. So I'm retiring to uh, harpoons and I kind of need some time for myself. Uh, so I'll let go of the boyfriends as well. Uh, then you went to sleep at night and had some visions. <laughs> I, I really like that. Or perhaps, you know, perhaps I start out with a violent ambition, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what harpoons might suggest. And then, then comes stuff like uh, um, sex and love and, and looking looking outward towards other people, uh -huh. boyfriends, you know, kind of uh, 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 welcoming the world, introducing myself to the world. I feel like that was the mission of the boyfriends. And then having had the violent ambition, having introduced myself to the world of boys, friends, and, and all other um, people who might love my work and I might love them, mm -hmm. you know, we can have pure dreamy uh, realizations of inner experience sure. that, that the visions reflect. But, you know, it's all, it's all a bit improvised. <laughs> uh, and it really, it, it really couldn't be the boyfriends anymore uh -huh. for this record because uh, although, although the visions are the same band members as were in the boyfriends, That's we're not so friendly yeah, yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we're not so uh, boyish and friendly. Uh -huh, uh -huh. A bit more... Like a man friend to me. <laughs> man from me. This is clumsy uh, portmanteau, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> man from me is terrible. <laughs> I, Other from and the man from me. I will, yeah, I reject that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would as well. Yeah, that's name. a good choice. Good call. Yeah, but I think we're just a bit more, less boyish and friendly and more ad, um, adult and uh, well, mm. perhaps visionary or, uh, or dream, oh. dreamy, dreamlike. Oh, okay, dreamlike. Okay. So it's... Uh, nightmarish, nightmarish sometimes. Oh, gho ghoulish. I don't know, ghoulish, but really nightmarish, like... I don't know. This, this record... Haunting. This record is a bit of a nightmare. Oh, you know, it's 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 sort of a a, a, a nightmare come true. It's it's about. Um, yeah, it's totally the, the, the name of uh, naming, naming your band divisions or having it be as referring and divisions makes subtle sense with uh, the uh, the the oeuvre, the the oeuvre. The, the um, in proper French, not the over, but um, uh, <laughs> but the um, the oeuvre, but uh, the, the work, uh, the body of work that you're presenting right now. It makes total sense. Like you, you get that as a listener, I would say, as a uh, interlocutor. Well, thanks. Well, there you go. <laughs> you're welcome. Does it end with uh, with Vincent? The journey? It ends with Vincent. So that's the closer of the. Well, it's, it it closes with a flashback, you know, to before the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is I, there's a lot of artworks that end that way that I really like. I like that tactic, uh -huh. ending with something that was the very before the start. Um, and shows the, so, the sort of the whole underpinning of the whole experience. And for me, that, that song, I Lost My Innocence, is like uh, the whole perspective of myself as like a outsider, outlaw, queer for life, is uh, something that I feel like I was marked with from a young age, you know? When you notice, when you have like a... I mean, that song is about a young, gay, sexual experience that, like, changes you forever. Mm. And uh, um, that's something in my personal experience, and I feel like it, it gave me the, the perspective that 
shaped everything about me, you know? Mm -hmm. A sort of, uh, you know... Moment, but like, yeah, yeah, like, like if you have felt marginalized, threatened, but also um, loved, mm -hmm. as like, I think is a way, that's a way you could describe some parts of the queer experience. Uh -huh. Like you're, you're feel like a lot of the world's out to get you, but you've also got this people who are on your team who are, who are with you in your queerness. And uh, it kind of could potentially set you up for a life where you take courage from uh, from other vulnerable people and you put your solidarity with other vulnerable people. It's kind of what the record's about, fear and solidarity and yeah. how both of those things complement each other in my my worldview, especially these days, in these days of the world refugee crisis and uh, ascendant white supremacy and... Uh, it's a lot about claiming your own territory, isn't it? Like, even uh, for yourself and in, uh, in your circle, uh, in this case. Yeah, well, it's it's a lot. It's claiming uh, some power. Uh huh. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. For yeah. for myself, when I feel powerless, or or uh, or claiming some power for other people who feel powerless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because when the powerless claim power together, they actually create that power. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You know, as I'm, I'm interested in that kind of. Th thinking um, and uh, you know what happens when when uh, when the unpowerful bond together work together unionize and uh, and give and find the power within us <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, sure, sure. Watching John Mulaney's new special, uh, which is called? Uh, it's called uh, Kid Gorgeous. Okay. Kid Gorgeous, <laughs> and it's fantastic. And he's getting better and better through, throughout the years. And uh, it's really good if you haven't seen it, watch it. But um, I totally recommend you guys as well. Uh, okay, so. So John Mulaney um, uh, learned the psalms in church and describes them as really not so good songs. Uh, this is not the case with the Psalm 151, I uh -huh. can imagine. <laughs> so, so, so he was he was disturbed by reading psalms. He was disturbed. He, he just considers psalms to be not necessarily uh, uh, good songs. Just like kind of. Ba <laughs> oh yeah, in terms of songwriting, so, so like songwriting, exactly. It's not 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 always catchy. No. <laughs> yeah. And not very well written song so it's not a song it's a psalm that's it's not the case that I'm asking if uh, it's the case at all with Psalm 151 which I'm not I don't currently have a, a, I don't know <laughs> well present I mean. well in in defense of the author or authors of <laughs> psalms <laughs> <laughs> they were sort of early pioneers in the uh, songwriting field. Sure. I feel like you got to cut them some slack. Yeah. And but for another thing, I mean, I have, I'm sure this. Well, I don't know. I figure this is why you maybe brought this up. Uh -huh. is that Psalms. I actually can't remember how much it comes up on our record explicitly. Uh huh. But I've I was obsessed with the Book of Psalms. Okay. I read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and I read the whole thing again. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm I'm Jewish and I'm uh, in many ways I'm very traditional mm -hmm. about Jewish observance. In other ways I'm not, as I'm sure uh -huh. you can tell. Uh -huh. uh, but traditional Jews often like read Psalms. Some people read the whole book every day sometimes, which uh -huh. is 150. So it's very long. Yeah. Some some do it like a few a few a day and they get through it in a month. Um, so that's what I did a few times, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and uh, I 
about your life or recently? Uh, for this record, I mean. Well, not for the record, just like in, mean, the, past for, in the past five years. That's, I, that's yeah. when I started to really record, read yeah. Psalms. And I, I think I, something I love about it is that, it, so about half, it's about half like total awe and joy and like, and like the world is so beautiful, God is so great. Um, I'm so lucky that God has helped me. And the other half is like, my enemies are all trying to, trying to get me. Like, why God, why? Why do I suffer like this? When will I be free of these tormentors? And uh, and why do they even exist? I mean, like, why? Just don't be cruel. And why? Why are you? Why? Why do you have to get on my shit? Like, yeah. right? Yeah, that that comes up too. Uh, you know, like what's wrong with the world that there's evil in it um, and these two things like a great wonder and joy and like enormous fear and um, antagonism against like the people who are trying to hurt you mm -hmm. um, are just like big in my life personally those mm -hmm. are kind of the two things I don't know. The two things I was most interested in as as an artist, and then I'm reading Psalms, and it's just like those two things nonstop. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I I consider Psalms, at least lyrics wise, <laughs> like kind of a aspirational role model kind of document uh -huh. to me as a sure. writer sure, sure. Uh, I, can, I can understand like if you look at it in a very uh, primitive way then it can, can be very inspiring because in some ways it's more even more necessary kind of in a way right well it, and it's surprisingly personal and to me it's surprisingly universal uh -huh. I, I, I relatable mm -hmm. I just was surprised at how much I could personally relate to those even though they were uh, written thousands of years ago yeah yeah absolutely if we didn't ask the classic Made of Things question, which is, which I always do, which is, uh, Made of Things is, uh, is the name of the show, and it's yeah. uh, the, uh, the, the idea is that, um, um, it's based on the idea that, uh, as an artist, you, something happened to you, or, or you read something, or watched something, or, uh, or, or, or listened to something, uh, that made you go, oh, I, rule, I want to do that. Um, I heard you on WTF with Marin, mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, as a longtime fan of Mark, Uh, but uh, but uh, um, this, uh, it's, he's fantastic, and um, the, the whole journey is just heart heartwarming. But uh, so with you, it was Green Day, right? Like it made you go like, oh, I want to, I want to be a musician. Yeah, it was Green Day and and subsequent punk bands. Yeah, uh, and Green Day was the first. I mean, this, the album Dookie, the 1994, I, yeah, think, I think, release so. from yeah, Green Day. Late 1994. Yeah, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure because I went through the. Uh, I, I enjoy that album for like a month. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I never heard, heard Green Day anymore. I understand. <laughs> I understand that. You know, uh, for me, it was the first time I heard any punk band, and oh. I first first time actually, I think I heard anyone um, sort of proudly announcing that they were uh, um, maladjusted. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, And I didn't know you could be proud of that. Uh -huh. And I felt very maladjusted at the time, but I felt very like ashamed of it. And then I heard these, this guy just like, like trumpeting it with, ex with, with fast, fast drums, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. those two things. Did uh, you go much more uh, like the IY punk uh, after that, or just like the sort of Green Day-ish bands like Rancid and stuff like that? Uh, well, I just kind of the opposite because Rancid is all previous, I think. But, yeah, it was just a gateway into like, oh, I like punk music, I guess. Uh -huh. I, d I don't okay. know any other punk bands, but I found so like then shortly after that, I got into the Sex Pistols, which mm -hmm. to me that was almost, that was sort of more important, especially as a singer. 
because I just heard Johnny Rotten, I, you know, that way that he sings, I heard him doing Anarchy in the UK, and I was like, oh, with that him, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. I feel, and that's uh, what I uh, am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and nobody, I've never seen somebody be that way, but that's how I am inside. I was like 12. Uh, sure, sure. Um, but I can totally tell, like, from your work, like, this this, this dude, you know, knows his punk. Like, <laughs> and, and has has a punk uh, side to it. Yeah. I like his enunciation also. He really, he really, he really lays into those uh, consonants. Yes. Right, like Antichrist. Christ. You know exactly. Yeah, that's more what James works. Hetfield. I apologize. <laughs> There you go. Uh, thanks, Ezra. Thanks no, for your time. Thank, not not your, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having okay, me um, here. Hope, uh, Just get a picture of it. Oh yeah. Yes, uh, do you want to stand? Uh, uh, no, much a pleasure once again and I'll uh, uh, hopefully um, speak to you always dude <laughs> always yeah. in front <laughs> I'll, I'll come back on the show <laughs> thank you so much that's that's so sweet <laughs>